Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. It's great that you've decided to join us. Tonight, we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 13, and we're going to talk about the motives for sacrifice and ministry. It's a critical issue for the church and for us as well. You know, I think the reality is, is that we all know that the Christian life and Christian ministry is difficult under even the best circumstances. That's very clear throughout Scripture. And remember what Hebrews chapter 11 verses 35 through 38 said. It said this, Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, and they were sawn in two. They were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world is not worthy, wandered about in the deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And you remember 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So the reality is we can expect difficulty in our Christian walk. You know, Paul now turns and he reminds Timothy that in Christian ministry, despite that reality, we are to stand firm in our faith in the midst of trial and difficulty. And he says it this way, beginning in verse 8. He says, Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also might obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Amen. What a great word for us. Now, I want you to notice there are four unique things about this text. Beginning in verse 8, he tells Timothy to remember the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 9, he references the power of God's word, that it is not bound, despite what we may think at times. And then in verse 10, he says, remember the purpose of your work. And then verses 11 through 13, he talks about the promise of reward. So those are four great reasons to stand firm in the midst of uh, ministry and to sacrifice for what God has planned for us. Now look at verse 8 and look at the opening word. He says, remember. Now the word remember is an imperative. It's in the active voice and it means it is a command to always remember, to be consistently before us in the forefront of our minds all the time. We are always to remember who Jesus Christ is, what he did, where he resides, how he meets our needs, and when he will return. We are to remember everything about Jesus because that gives us the strength to stand firm. And notice that Paul gives Timothy two primary things to remember. He says, remember that Christ was raised from the dead. It's literally, it literally in the Greek is having been raised from the dead. It's a critical thing for us to remember because the resurrection is the linchpin for the Christian faith. You remember 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 4, it said this, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. You see, if Christ did not raise from the dead, then it proves that everything else he did was false. It's a critical teaching in the New Testament. But he also says, then remember that Christ is the descendant of David. It's an interesting thing for, to tell the people to remember, because remember, they're not all Jews in this church. There are Gentiles there as well. But he says, remember, he's the descendant of David. And it speaks of Christ's humanity as well as his fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies about being the coming Messiah and the king for his kingdom. 
Listen to Luke chapter 1, verses 32 through 33. He will be great, speaking of Christ, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So you see this idea of the resurrection and the descent of David is critical for us to remember because our Lord fulfilled everything that the Messiah was to fulfill. The point is, in this whole first verse, is that Christ has proved who he is. So we cannot fear. We should not fear, as a matter of fact, as we go about our life because he did everything for us. And let's rest in that provision. Now, look at verse 9, and notice he talks about, about the power of God's word. Now, Paul is probably writing these words in Rome in Mamertine prison. These were the last words that he would write before he was killed. And he reminds Timothy that even though he is imprisoned, God's word is never imprisoned by man's efforts despite the circumstances of life. We should remember that. Whenever we get into a situation and we think God cannot fulfill his word, let's remember it does not return void. It always accomplishes what he says it will do. Listen to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. May we remember that the power that we possess is found in God's word. May we never fear from using it in our lives and following it. And then look at verse 10. He talks about the purpose of our work. Paul will endure all things, regardless of what it is, in order that God's elect will hear and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, that's a very consistent message that we see throughout the New Testament. Remember Jesus' words in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, where he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. And then remember 1 Peter 3, verses 16 through 17. Having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile you, your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Amen. Now, let's turn our attention to verses 11 through 13. And notice the promise of the reward. Paul reminds Timothy that Christ promises eternal blessings. That statement that we read in those, those three verses may be actually a creedal statement by the early church, that if we die for him, it was probably a reference to martyrdom, but martyrdom gave proof of our eternal life, that we belong to Jesus, so they could live for him regardless of what was coming. And then if they endured persecutions and trials and difficulties, our endurance proves our salvation and that we will reign with him. But denying Christ results in him denying us. We should remember that. And I want you to notice that that is in the future tense. So he's talking about, listen, if you go through life and you deny him in the future, remember, he will deny you as well. So that's a stern warning. And then, even if we are faithless, like Peter at the trial of Jesus, Christ will remain faithful to us. Remember that Christ came to Peter and restored him. And Peter became a great rock of the church. So we should always lean into Christ because he is always for us. He's always got our back. Now look, listen to these questions for us tonight. There are three of them tonight for us to consider. Why is remembering Christ as the risen Lord and the descendant of David so powerful as we face trials and persecutions and tribulations in life? Why should that give us the strength to, and the motivation to sacrifice in ministry? And then number two, 
why is it good to remember that God's word is never chained down as we face trials and tribulations of life? What does that promise bring to us as we work through the difficulties of life? And then number three, why does focusing on our purpose to make disciples provide motivation for sacrificial ministry? And why does eternal rewards give us the power to keep on keeping on in the face of difficulty and trial and keep us, uh, giving us the ability to sacrifice for ministry? Listen, I hope you've enjoyed this short study and I hope that we will see you on Saturday night for our worship service at 6.30 p.m. sharp. We meet at Victory Life Church at 155 Northwest 112th Avenue in Plantation, Florida. I think the zip is 33325. We would love to have you with us. We would cherish your presence. You will enjoy it. It's a great group of people and you'll have a lot of fun as well. So we hope to see you on Saturday night. Thanks a bunch and have a great week.